Hi, I'm Lauren. Welcome to Craft Some Joy. I am here today doing kind of a different video for my pop series. This is episode two, and I'm so excited that I get to do this with one of my dear friends, Maria. And she has uh, volunteered to be my guinea pig. <laughs> Okay. And so um, in order to kind of go through this process, I thought it would be really helpful to share with you how I'm going to kind of coach Maria to go through and uh, set up her progress on projects tracker. So uh, let's get started. And I just want to say if you are new here, welcome. And if you are a subscriber, thank you. Thanks for being the heart of my YouTube channel. All right, let's get started. We're gonna just jump in and I'm gonna show you just how I'm gonna help Maria get her pop planner set up. And we're gonna start by the very first page. So if you're following along, go ahead and grab your very title page. And I want you to just say, this is mine and write your name on the front. Okay, it's your planner. It's all about you and this is yours. So one of the things I wanna say here is that I have created these templates for you but really this process is all yours. So if something doesn't work for you, that's fine. And you just make it something that is gonna work for you and pick and choose. So the next sheet is your getting started. So I'm gonna put my notes over here and we're gonna just kind of scooch you over here, Maria. And we're gonna just ask you these questions. So at the very top, we're gonna just put the date, today's date and I think right now it's a good chance to just take a little bit of time for a couple minutes and do some reflection and just say for you, how important are photos for you? And I'd like to do a joy rating. And so we're going to say five hearts are that they are an extreme source of joy for you. Five hearts mm -hmm. all the way down to one heart, which is I only take pictures because I have to, and I really don't even, I just want to get them put someplace safe. So not as much of a joy factor. So in your case, and everybody's going to be different, but in your case, how important are photos to you? Photos are, are super important to me. I would give them a five heart rating. Five heart. Okay. So let's make five little hearts on there. And this is where, while Maria is doing that, I'm just going to say, usually we take photos for a couple of reasons. One is to tell our story and just to kind of document our lives. But another reason we take photos, and sometimes where a lot of photos end up, is that we take photos to have fun and be artistic. And that's really fine. And that's a, a fun way. That's where you'll find all your Instagram photos, your Facebook photos of lunch you had or places you went or things like that. And, uh, Sometimes those are just to be creative and just to have fun. They may or may not end up in an album, but that's okay. So great. I'm glad they are an important part of for you because they're an extreme source of joy for me too. <laughs> so secondly, if you had to rate what your commitment level is to this project, to really getting organized and attacking your projects this year, what is your commitment level? And we're gonna say three hearts is daily, two hearts is weekly, and one heart would be monthly. Uh, to be realistic, I would say weekly. However, I think I would be between daily and weekly. Okay, so maybe three and two and a half hearts. Yeah, <laughs> two and a half. Okay, and then I just write right next to that, I'm gonna do this weekly. My goal is to do weekly. I'm gonna do something either work with my photos, I'm gonna organize my photos, I'm gonna uh, look at my planner, I'm actually gonna scrapbook, all of those things. We're gonna have a weekly goal to do something. And I love what Stacy Julian says, and that is to reframe what we, how we talk about our time. And one of the things she says is that we have exactly enough time. And that's really what I want you to think about when you're thinking about working on your goals is that you have exactly enough time. Stop saying, I don't have enough time. Instead say, I have exactly enough time, because we do. Third question, what kind of a creator and maker are you? And a five heart would be, I love it, I want it all, and I love all the stuff, and my craft room is over packed and overflowing with all this stuff, because I love it all. 
Three hearts would be somewhere in the middle. I love to be creative, but I don't need all of it. And I really want to get my albums done. And one heart is that I'm just love my pictures and want a safe place for it. So I would give it a three heart rating. Okay. Uh, my craft room is not overpacked. Uh, I do love it all, but I know that it would be impractical to have it all. Okay, let's write that down. And this is while Maria's doing that, I just wanna say no matter what kind of a stash you have, whether you do have a stash that you are overflowing and bulging at the seams, or whether you don't have hardly anything and you're just getting started, no matter where you are in the process, that you can make meaningful, simple, and elegant pages. And that really is my goal. One of my main goals on this channel is to teach people that scrapbooking can be easy and fun and simple and beautiful and that your photos are the star <laughs> of your pages. Okay, there's really no one size fits all. Everybody is different. Everybody has their own style. Okay, and if you had to guess number four, or not guess, but if you had to ask the question, what photos are most meaningful to you? If you could just have an album and pull it off the shelf right now, what would be in that album? Family pictures, photos. Family, okay, let's write that down. Family would probably be your five star, your five heart. Family would be your five heart rating. And then let's just, for fun, let's just talk what would be next? What would be four hearts? Four hearts would be kid related. So either a sport or an activity or mm -hmm. something like that. And we did that beautiful birthday book for your daughter, Caroline. So something for kids, a theme album. Why don't we just say a kid's theme album? And you could pick whatever that would look like. And we're going to go one more because it looks like you have room there. Like what would be your next level there? Travel. Travel. Excellent. Always fun to look at travel photos. Okay, now if you wanted to continue this, you could go on and even think about what would be two hearts and one heart, but we're gonna just start with that. And Maria, are you ready to get started? Absolutely. Okay, then write it down because I wanna see it in print. <laughs> okay, and I just wanna say here, what is going to motivate us, our why to do this is not from guilt and anxiety because that's just a downer. Our why is to remember why we take photos in the first place. Our why is really that photos are important, that you're committed, that you love to make stuff, and these are your whys right here because those photos are the most meaningful to you. Okay, let's dig in and go on to the next page. Okay, so here is the photo organization tips. And this is where it gets really fun because we're gonna just get into the process a little bit more and more. And Maria, I gave you some homework the last time I was at your house visiting. And what was that? That was to try to get every, all the digital chips and CDs and everything in one place. So okay. The photos were in one. And how about your printed photos too? They have that too, which they're, they're organized, but they're in different places. Okay, so one of the things we talked about was for Maria, because we went and we walked through her house and we saw, wow, there's photos different, different places. And in order to kind of get a system to decide with our printed photos, where we're gonna put those, what kind of albums we wanna make, we need to get them all in one place. And so that's what I would challenge all of you. If you've got some in a drawer or you've got some in a closet, um, get a table or get um, a little corner or something where you can actually start gathering everything all in one place because you really need to kind of do a inventory of what you have that's already printed. And digital is a whole nother beast. We're gonna talk about digital too, but right now I wanna start with printed photos. Um, some of these ideas can follow through with digital, but for first, we're just going to talk a little bit about printed photos and you'll see the, you'll see the relationship to digital as well. So that's the first thing, get them all in one place. Once you have them in one place, we're going to do something today that's really going to help you because it helped me a lot and that is create a timeline. I'm really excited about that. That's going to be fun. Then once you've got that, that 
is gonna be a crucial piece to the process and you're gonna start using that timeline to help you sort by decade, sort by year, sort by month, even by see or either season or month. And once you get that, you're gonna have manageable stacks of printed photos that you're gonna be able to deal with. And I'm gonna kinda of just run through a little bit more, but we're gonna come right back and do the timeline in just a minute. So first here, what I wanna just mention, when you get to this point where you're working with just a little, a smaller stack of photos, the first decision point that you're gonna to come to is are you going to keep, keep your photos? Are you gonna to decide to keep those photos? Are they album worthy and do they tell a story or do you just, is it just a sweet photo that you wanna save? Maybe it's not gonna get into an album and I know for myself, sometimes uh, photos, I lost my mom in 2003 and so even though those are film photos and they may not be the best photos, I'm not ready to toss those yet. So those are gonna go in, into an archive for me. So I think you know we can all kind of decide it may not be the best photo, but I'm not ready to toss it yet. Those are archive photos. But then there's definitely going to be your toss pile. How do you feel about tossing? I think that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> With uh, a roll of 36 back in the day, there was inevitably several duds and right. blurries and things like that. So right. might as well get them out. Whether you have one, two, or you know, right. three of them, you're not going to use them. You're not going to want to save them necessarily. Right. And that's going to feel good. It's going to be a little scary at first, but it's going to feel good. So sometimes you could put this just on the edge and have a trash can just sitting right there ready for yeah. your C pile. Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and I do have a note here that I have delete because digitally you have to also think about that as well. If it's a blurry, just like you said, a blurry or just a really bad photo, go ahead and delete it. Do yourself a favor. Get it off your computer. So... That's your, your seat. That's kind of an easy decision, right? Hopefully. And then those get put off to the side. And then you have the A and the Bs. And then we talked a little bit about archive. Do you have an idea of what you might be putting in archive just in some of your photos? Yeah, I think archives would be, if you take a, a similar shot of the same, or a second photo of the same shot, you don't need both. But you don't, maybe because it's a really cute picture in and of itself, but mm -hmm. you don't need to save it. So that would be... An archive, right. also an archive would, like you said, with your mom, would be photos of your grandma or my grandma, my dad, mm -hmm. where um, they have also passed away, but they may not be worthy enough to go into an album because you might have something better, right. but it's not something right. that you necessarily want to throw out. Right. And I think that's important to Kim. I'm glad you said that because it's important in today's day and age, we have digital, you know, I mean, we take thousands of photos on a vacation. And so... Um, even when we took film or we have those printed, you don't need all of them. They're not all going to go into an album, but really think your A photos, your A photos really are going to be album worthy. But like you said, you may want to keep those. Okay, so then we're going to take B photos out of the picture. Now, this is where it gets a little complicated. And don't worry, we're going to talk more about this, but not today. <laughs> But I do at least want to just mention, after you've decided on your A photos, then they can go three places if you like kind of the system that I have set up. And again, this is where I say, the system is going to adapt to what works for each of us. And I decided that I do like chronological, and so those are going to be my big moments. And that's I'm going to keep my chronological albums going because it's something I started and 1995 so I want to keep those going but it's just those celebrations throughout the year and the special moments and then there's also theme and I saw on your list you're going to definitely want to do theme those are vacation kids books mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and uh, you can decide how you want to tackle your family albums whether they're going to be kind of in the library of memories format or big moments you can, I'm not going to put you on the spot. <laughs> you can think about that. As I mentioned in my other couple of videos, um, this is the new category I'm going to be moving forward with, which is Library of Memories. And that's where we do the things, places, people, and us. And there's a lot of good information there. But the main thing I want you to know about Library of Memories is that there's no chronological. 
Remember, we talked about that? So you can just throw all those photos together, mix them up, and make those connections through time, which is kind of fun. Very fun. It's freeing. Yes, yes. So library memories. Now, if that's too uh, crazy for you to think about, I also have another way you can think about library of memories. If you don't want to go into the people, things, um, the things, places, people, and us categories, you can also just do a theme. This was something I heard about. You could also do a theme album that says, we're a family that, and then fill in the blank. You could be a family that loves to travel, and so you have an album just of travel, or you're a family that loves to celebrate, so you have birthdays and celebrations, that loves one another, that loves holidays, and et cetera. So you can make this style of album as simple or you know kind of toss it apart as much as you want so just another idea okay well are you ready to get back into the second part create a timeline i am all right let's do it okay so we're gonna keep that open over here and i'm gonna have you grab your timeline tracker so the first thing I want you all to do once you have your family timeline tracker out, and again, remember, I left Maria's without the uh, scoring piece in it, just so it's a little easier to write on. But then once you're done, you're going to score it so you can put it in your planner. And at the top, the way the timeline tracker works is that these are set up by decade. So in that very top corner, we're going to write year. And then this is where you need to think about where you want to start. Now you can always go back and as you go back, that would start getting into even heritage pictures, but think of a year that might be a good starting point for you. So sometimes that might be a marriage or when you met your significant other and um, kind of start at, and I would suggest to start at a even beginning of, okay. beginning of a decade. <laughs> All right. Well, we met in 1989, uh, 1980. Eight. So oh, perfect. Start. Perfect for you. So you're going to just write that and go down 10 years. So one of the things I had mentioned before is that some of the forms you're going to want to print several of. This would be one of those forms if you have quite a little history. And I know I have, uh, I think, four of these forms for my timeline and you just have to think of a good starting and an ending point. So you might need to print several of these. Okay. After the year going down the side, then we're gonna go across the top. And across the top is kind of what I like to say, who you think you'll, or who, or your family, or who you're gonna be doing albums for. And it could, not that they've already been started, but you know, just kind of in the big picture, who, what, what kind of albums would you like to see on your bookshelves? And typically we start the first one with family, or if you are not family yet, it could be like you, you and your husband or significant other um, could go in that column. And then um, the next columns would be like, say if kids come along or significant people that you wanna make albums for. And then over here, I like to put a little travel um, column. And it was really fun to kind of see over time the different places we went. Mm -hmm. So uh, I just kept that over to the side. And again, if you have a, an extremely large family, and we both have four kids, so this, this works out perfect for us. But if you have a larger family, you may want to print two of these and just kind of extend it that way. Um, or if you don't have a larger family, you can just work on the first few columns. So as you go down, look at your decade and is there something, we're going to switch to pencil now because this is where you're probably going to be writing things down, erasing, and then writing them again as you kind of work through and remember where, where you were in this part of your life. So um, working with your first year, do you remember, were you in college? We were in, we were in high school, actually. In high, well, high school, sweetheart. Yeah. So yeah, so you could just put M and M, <laughs> high school, just kind of as a starting point. And then just kind of look down and does something pop out at you as you're going down? We got married in 89. Okay, so why don't you put in that box, that first box there, that, that was 
M and M wedding, and you or however you want to document that. Now, did you guys go on a honeymoon that year? We did. Okay, so go all the way over into your travel column, and if you remember where you went, <laughs> we went to France and Italy. Awesome! Oh wow, wonderful pictures. And sometimes what I remember when I was looking back is I know my husband and I, John and I went to places before the kids, remember? Like you could do a lot more before yeah. kids. So it was kind of fun to look at the places we went before the family happened. I okay. can't think of anything of that, of that nature right now. Okay. So then why don't you grab another tracker, Maria? And then we're going to go right after 1989. We're going to start with the decade of 1990, in the 90s. Woo, that was a long time ago. <laughs> it's really amazing once you start writing things down, how much you don't remember. <laughs> exactly. Right. So, all right, so we gave, Maria gave you a little time to try to start working on your trackers and you filled out a lot of different years. And you had a couple questions that came up that I thought might be good to go over. And one of them was, how do you deal with school and graduation? Because sometimes you're graduating and you're starting a new school. So what was helpful for you when we came? Let's just look at Kevin's column here, how to keep track of that. Example here is that he graduated from eighth grade in 2006, June of 2006. And then he started high school that September. And he was 14 when he started and then he turned 15 in right. October. Right. So so the thing that's not ever going to change is the birthday, right? So those numbers that you circled are going to correspond to a year, and, and that's the birthday. But what is going to change sometimes is the school, because schools span more than one year, <laughs> which is kind of crazy-making sometimes. And that does cause us to have a lot of confusion when we're going back and looking at photos. So I'm really glad you brought that up. So as we kind of go through and look at these trackers, what I want you to think about too is for your family books, how you might start grouping things together and what years look like, what years you might see as working together, but also the same for your kids. So there might be years that, um, you look at your kids and you go, oh, let's say from middle school. Remember in middle school, your kind of pictures start to fall off and you don't take as many. And so one of the things I was thinking about for me and my kids is from middle school all the way through to high school, just looking at that as an all about them book. Mm -hmm. And so we could look at that again across time. So like for your boys, we could look at them playing baseball several years at a time instead of chronologically, you know, just kind of doing a section of baseball. Right. That makes perfect sense. So this is going to help you kind of look at the years and go, okay, like for Kevin, you know, what years, where was he in middle school, high school, even elementary school? What years was he playing baseball? And just use this as a really an, a good place to keep all those notes together. Does that make sense? It makes sense. Okay. So Maria, we're looking at all of your timeline trackers across time. This is pretty exciting to see. And you're gonna have to start a new one for this year, a new decade. But before we go, um, are there any questions you have? I don't have any questions. I'll just continue to fill in. And um, mm -hmm. it's a lot easier to see it on paper than it is in your head. Right, right. And it's gonna be fun to kind of go through and see, you know, just keep going down your columns and putting all their ages and the grades and where they were and, uh, and your travel too. Exactly. Okay. Well, thanks for joining me today. You're I hope this welcome. was helpful and can't wait to see all your notes when you come back and show me your trackers filled out. I will okay. be back. Okay. So while Maria is off um, on her quest to finish filling out her timeline trackers. I just wanted to go over how I filled out my trackers for those of you who want to kind of see what this might look like as an end result. And um, 
I'm just gonna kind of quickly go through these different trackers. Now, again, all of our lives are so different and filled with different people and different events. And so everybody's timeline is really going to be unique to them. And so that's what's exciting though, is being able to kind of see at a glance what's happened so far in your life. It's really, really fun. So my timeline tracker, I actually started with the year 1990 and my husband and I met in 89. And so this was kind of a good decade for us to start. And so as you can see in my family column, I am going to group these three years. Now I should mention that even though I have created over 50 albums since I started scrapbooking, I am not caught up and there are still a lot of albums that I want to create. And so this is another place where I can keep track of what I've already created and also projects that I know uh, still need to be addressed. And this is one of those projects. So I'm looking back at the years 1990 through 92 and I kind of started this album. It's gonna be a combo album, but it's in process. And so my little designation for something that's started, it has an album, but I've just not really done very much with it is IP in process. Now, as we kind of go down, so I know those three years are going to all fit into one album. As I go down my column in 1993, that's when we were married. And so that's where I'm going to add in here our wedding. I do have a wedding book that is complete. And so my designation for that is C. And I put a little C with a circle around it. Now that same year, if you go across, that's when we took our honeymoon and that was to London and Greece. And I do have a honeymoon book uh, with our vacation to London and Greece and so that's completed and so I put that over here in the travel column. Okay going back down after we were married we had a lot of different things that we did together just my husband and I and so all of those now I can see I'm going to group together in an album that's going to be 93 through 95 and again that one is not started NS is my designation for not started. But it gives me an opportunity to look that, oh, these years when I'm looking for pictures now, 93, 94, 95, all of those are gonna kind of get grouped into this type of an album. So I hope that's making sense. And it's a really nice way to kind of have that overview snapshot. Okay, and then the next year is 1996. And thus enter my scrapbooking frenzy. So this is kind of when I really got into scrapbooking. And so I do have an album of my husband and I, and that one is complete. So it has the C. And then we did travel that year. We went to Cancun and Yellowstone, but I included those in the album. So I just made a note here that our travel was included in this 1996 album. Well, in 1997 was uh, what the year that our first was born, when Ellen was born. And so now I got to add her column right in here. And so in 1997, she has a baby book, which is complete. And then I also did a first year book. So when from when she was a baby to when she turned one, and that's complete. The next year, 98, and you can see actually here, my family book is still in process because I was really focusing on her. And I just kind of have a lot, when I was looking through it, I go, I really need to get back there and kind of finish that book up. So that's an in process. And then you can see here, 1998, that's another family album that I do not have started. So it's NS, but I do have an album for Ellen, which is her one to two album and that's completed. And if you remember my story, my goal was to get every single photograph of my kids and every single photograph into albums. And so this is when my kind of explosion was happening into scrapbooking. And I was just really working on a lot of different projects at once. So she has an album here. In 1999, we have our family album and that one is complete. She has a, another album from when she was two years old to when she was three years old, that's complete. And then Adam was born and he has his baby book and his first year book. So you can see just in this progression, 
how much more work I had as far as album making goes. And that's where I really want to share with you a perspective from someone who's looking back, how I would start over and how I would kind of look at the big picture from the very beginning, or even now, if we're down the road, let's take a look at that big picture because this was not sustainable, doing an album for each year for each of my kids. It just, as you see, as we go through the tracker, you can see how that kind of fell off. But I do have a plan now on how to move forward. So let's take a look. So here's my next decade. So this is the decade from 2000 to 2009. And here's where things start looking a little more complicated on my tracker. But really, when you take a closer look, it's not that bad. So here again, I'm just going to kind of briefly run down my family column. I have books that I've completed. Then I took so many pictures, I ended up putting family, my family books into two different volumes, volume one, volume two. Again here, volume one, volume two, some of them are completed, some are in process. And then I got to a point um, that I just... I didn't even start. This was actually a really difficult year for me. My mom passed away and we were super close. And also our fourth child was born. So you can kind of just see in this year, that was just something my family book just didn't get done. And so you just move on and see, but I kind of got back into it. My volume 2004 book started getting happening. But that's okay. So what I want to say is wherever you are in this process, just make a note. Get it down on paper because it is so important to kind of see where you are and also celebrate what you've done because if you have even just started a project and they're still in process, that's something great to note down. And then you get to decide if that's something that you want to continue and where that is in your priority list. Now, if we just kind of look down the kids' columns, I'm not going to go through every one of them, but I'm just going to kind of give you a few little pointers as you're putting in your kids. So for my oldest, she did, as I mentioned, have those yearly books. And then as I'm looking out into the other kids, they never got past their first year. And so I'm going to look at this whole section for Audrey and for Eric as grouping, as a chance that I can just kind of group all of these years together and do kind of like a growing up book and just group things together. And that, again, that's that perspective where I can take a look and go, I don't have anything for them here, so what do I want to do? How can I make that manageable? And so I'm gonna group things together. Now for, um, Ellen, going back to Ellen, this is, she's older, of course, so she actually started kindergarten. And this is pretty consistent for all of my kids is that from kindergarten, first and second, they have a school, which is their volume one. And from third, fourth and fifth, that's a school volume two. Now, I do wanna mention here, I uh, was a stay home mom. I still am a stay home mom and I was really involved with my kids. And so I went on the field trips and I took lots of pictures and I volunteered in the classroom and I taught art lessons. And so I have lots of pictures. So for me, getting those first years, especially kindergarten, first and second grade, that was hard to just squeeze into one book. So you really have to look at what your situation is and the amount of photographs and memorabilia and schoolwork and so forth you have. And then make a plan, group different areas together. So for me, I know this is what works because I've already started their school books and that's all that will fit. Okay, so I hope that's making sense. And again, for Adam, kind of as we're looking through here, um, so these these years I'm going as I'm going back and looking at it okay I'm going to group these years together so I know from 2001 2002 2003 those photographs those are going to get grouped together in a in one book and then lastly in the travel column here again you can mark those significant trips if you took um, trips throughout the year or with your family and then I ended up at some points, we actually took summer trips. So I put a little S for summer 
And then a, a few years, we did a winter trip during winter break for those kids when they were in school. And so I just put an, a W there for winter. So I know in winter of 2007, we took a trip to Big Bear. And in the summer, we went to Palm Desert. Okay, so you make little notations that work for you and that you understand on your own tracker. So it could be S, it could be W, it could be whatever it is. Um, and then the completed, in process, and not started. Those are also my little designations. Now, also, just lastly down here, you'll also see SB. You might wonder what SB is. SB is spring break. So there was a point in time when my kids were all in school and so we all had uh, the same spring break and we all had the same winter break and the same summer break. And so that's when we took advantage of those times of year and we were able to do some trips with the family. One of our goals as a family was to be able to take the kids to a lot of different national parks. And so we were able to squeeze those in during spring break or during summer or during winter. So, uh, so that kind of shows that. And again, this is just as they get older, you can see how this gets even more filled out as time goes on. And again, you've got your family books coming down this way. You've got your kids. And then this is when my kids got into the, at least my two older ones, got into high school and middle school. And as I mentioned before, now I'm looking at these years of sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, all the way up through 12th grade, where the picture taking really did kind of fall off throughout the year for them. And it was really kind of more personality photos and things throughout the year. And so it was important for me to kind of take a look at that and go, okay, so now what I wanna do is an all about book. So these are the years that I'm gonna look at, all of these years, and I'm gonna do an all about Adam from sixth grade to 12th grade. And then once he graduated and then is attending college, that might be another volume. So I could see this as my first volume and then from here on, that could be a separate volume. Okay, so I hope this is not sounding too complicated. I really don't want it to be feel complicated for you. But I do know that for us, for those of us with children and kind of managing their school and kind of what happened during the different years. But this is a, a great way to write everything down, get it on paper, and it's also a nice way to kind of look ahead and go, oh yeah, so even if I look at the decade ahead from year 2020, oh, this is kind of showing me that, um, in this year, my daughter Audrey is graduating high school. In two more years, my son Eric is gonna graduate high school. Adam is transferring this year to Cal Poly Pomona. And so those major things are kind of coming up and you can just kind of forecast ahead also on these trackers, which is really nice. So I hope that was helpful to kind of take a look at what uh, the busy, busy end result could look like. But again, everybody's is gonna look a little bit different. And my goal here was just to give you a form that you can use in whatever way makes sense to you. And then again, on the left-hand side, you're gonna be going by year. And then on the top, the types of albums that you want to create and who you're gonna be creating those for. Okay, so that is a really, really valuable piece that you are going to love having in your pop planner for tracking, the, tracking your events over time. And as I mentioned before, this is really gonna help you with photo organization and especially for your printed photos, but also for your digital. And I will be addressing digital in another episode. But for printed photos, this is going to be your go-to. And this is what's gonna help you create your 
piles of photos and help you decide what kinds of albums you're gonna make. So make sure you get those filled out, your timeline trackers, and then put them behind your timeline tab in your planner. And then in episode three, I hope you'll come back and join me because we are going to get set up and I will show you exactly how I have all of my boxes set up and organized in order to start working on my album projects. And that is a big turning point because from there you've got your photographs organized and then album making is a breeze and we get to do that really fun, fun part. So I'm really excited to bring you that next episode. And until next time, I hope you take time to make a little progress on your projects and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye for now.